Hey everyone, this is Joseph with 3 Sports Today I'm gonna be showing you how I made this. It's a pretty simple luggage tag. I actually made one of these for myself and one of these for my wife a couple of weeks ago when we went on a trip. And this is just some generic contact information that I put on the other side. And one of her friends saw it and she wanted one. So I thought that maybe this would be something that you all would be interested in as well. I actually think this is a good product to actually try to sell, you know, on Facebook Marketplace, Etsy, something like that, because uh, a couple of reasons actually one is customizable you know, obviously people would want their own contact information on the back and their own initials here on the front uh, people might want it in different colors which is easy with 3d printing and it's easy to ship you know you can put this in an envelope and send it to somebody for you know a couple cents so just wanted to share this with you i'll have the fusion files down in the description for you to download if you're interested and i uh, just hope that you consider subscribing to support the channel so Let's get started and thank you for watching. All right, so here's the file that I made. You can see it's fairly straightforward. I just want to briefly go through how I did it just for those of you that are curious. So the first sketch is just making the outline. Uh, I actually did add the radius to the sketch, which is not something that you typically do, but thought that in this case it would make sense. I modeled this after another luggage tag that I had that I thought was a pretty good size so obviously if you want to make it a different size or shape feel free to do that but uh, this is just the general process that i went through and then we'll go back here so the first extrusion was just to get the thickness i chose three millimeters because i felt like that would make it sturdy enough but also not take too long and feel like it was a pretty good size and the next step here was to make the initials here and you see that i chose to make the sketch based on the radius or the centers of these radiuses radii and then also offset it from this little slot that i made so that you could put a loop in it or whatever but you know some people might choose to center it here which i looked at and thought that maybe that would be okay but you know basically saying this is the outside perimeter because just to your eyes if you center it based off of this and you know this then it looks like these letters are kind of hugging up against the slide so in my opinion i felt like this looked better you know that was just my personal thought process but uh, feel free to center it however you would like and obviously if you're trying to go in and edit this which i'll put the files or make them available i just rename these uh, so it's more clear uh, if you want to change anything, you just go into initials, right click, and then you want to click on edit sketch. And then you see how the actual initials light up. So you double click on those and you'll see here that you can change this to, you know, whatever you want. And I think generally speaking, it's good to have it pretty large and you can add character spacing. I think for bigger letters, it's not as big of an issue, but for smaller letters, you definitely want to add a little bit of spacing there. So I think leaving it at about five is probably a good, especially for the larger letters. And then we just extrude those out. And if you want to actually change the color of the face, so this is just the extrusion. I've already went through and changed the color, but uh, if you're trying to make a mock-up for a client or something, you want to click A for appearance and then you'll see appearance will come up and this is just some other colors I've used previously. So you wanna select faces and then you can drag your color onto that face. So that's a good way to kind of give your client or whoever's purchasing a mock-up to kind of envision what it might look like uh, based on the filament colors that you have. So I'm gonna change mine back to white and it'll probably be all the same color when you initially extrude it. So uh, just to be clear, it doesn't initially look like this when you first uh, extrude it most of the time. And so then the next step is to add stuff to the back. So again, I'm going to rename this uh, back text. So this is the other text that you're going to add. Go into here, right click and click edit sketch. And then here, obviously, I added my information, which is just fake information, but you can do with this as you like. Again, you can uh, kind of offset things if you want to. I feel like the spacing here is pretty uh, centered overall. I feel like since there's more text here, it's not as big of an issue to center it based on uh, where everything's at uh, relative to these points, unlike the uh, initials on the other side. So I just left it kind of centered that way. And I did add some character spacing here, which is more important because when you're thinking about the printer printing these off, you don't want these to kind of touch each other. So this just adds some space. So if we go and just add zero, you can see how cl much closer they get. 
And I would recommend keeping some character spacing, especially on this back side where the font's a little bit smaller. Uh, I recommend at least 10, you know, 13 is what I have it on now. I think that looks pretty good. So you can also add other information. If you want to add an email, you can do that pretty easily. So if you go in here and click, uh, put 3D sorcerer at info.com or, you know, whatever you want to do, I think that that would be very easy to add if you want to. So those are just some examples of some information and you kind of do the same process again. You're going to extrude that text out. You can see there that I'd already changed the colors, but again, if you want to change the colors, click A for appearance and then change this to faces and then you can add a different color to your faces. Let's see, sometimes it doesn't like to pick up. So if you zoom in, it usually has a little bit easier time seeing what you want to do and you can change it back. So that is how i made it and then the last step is i added a chamfer as you can see here around the whole edge to kind of give it a nice refined look just a general statement about 3d printing uh, if you add chamfers it makes it look a little bit more professional and that's pretty easy to do it's literally one step and uh, i think that this looks pretty good all right so now i have it completed and i'm pretty happy with how it looks you know if you want to take a screenshot send it to your client or whatever you can do that now another thing that i like to do is to go into the render workspace computer's running kind of slow right now uh, because i haven't updated it to the most recent update and you can do you know an actual render but for most people you can just go ahead and do a uh, capture image actually and then just leave that and then click ok and then just take a couple of pictures like that it's for most uh, render situations, if it's not for like a big client or something, if you're just doing a real quick uh, demo kind of like this for someone that might want something relatively cheap, then I think that's more than sufficient. You know, you could take it of different angles and things like that. So uh, that's just something I wanted to share with you real quick. I'm gonna go back over to the Zon workspace and then export the 3D print this. And then mine's already set up to go to Prusa Slicer, so hopefully it exported over. There it is. And you could do this on any 3D printer. I'm showing you the color change option, which for most people is an option. You know, if you have a AMS unit or multi-material system, you can do it a different way, but just like to demonstrate this because pretty much anyone that has a printer can do it this way. And I generally like to keep this face down because I feel like this is the side that people want to look the best, generally speaking and then you want to come down. I have it on 0.2 millimeter layer height and I left it on quality because it is a fairly small print. And then you want to go to layer six if you leave it on 0.2 millimeters and you keep my extrusions the same height and click add. And then you want to go up to layer 11. You can see in parentheses 11 and click add again. And so what this is doing is changing or adding a layer a, uh, filament swap. And you can see here, We've done the first couple layers, the first five layers in the same color. And then here at layer six, we're changing over and to a different filament. And you can see here by the green. And you just wanna make sure that the last layer of uh, cutout is a different color. You can see there. So it's bridging over and you want that because that's the background of your sign that you're making or of your name tag. And then you keep it that same color all the way up until you get to here and so again you have the background that uh green color whatever filament color you choose and then the next layer is this other color and you can see the green and then it switches and then that goes all the way up to the top so you're gonna have two color changes and you know obviously you could do really three colors with this but i generally just switch it back to the original color uh which i think looks pretty nice so that's how you do it you can see here how long it takes takes an hour and 13 minutes and the good thing about this too is if you were doing multiple people with the same colors you know you could probably add a couple more to this let's just go ahead and see probably do three maybe you can definitely do two if you have the but you can do three if you have it real calibrated maybe rotate this yeah so you could fit three on a person many at a time Let's just see how long this takes, just for fun. And you would have to change the filament, obviously. But three, three and a half hours. But I think you could actually make decent money off of this uh, if you found the right niche and really uh, perfected it and maybe added some cool designs, maybe some different shape options and things like that. So 
Uh, this is third person mini. Obviously, if you have a Prusa Mark IV, or Mark III, or XL, or a Bamboo Lab printer, or something like that, you could print a lot more on one uh, bed plate. So, so another thing I wanted to mention was this top layer. You can kind of play around with different patterns that are possible. If you go to print settings and then go to uh, infill, I believe, you can see here the top fill pattern, which is basically the top couple layers. It's on monotonic lines. And I like to change this for something that will be seen more to Hilbert curve. Uh, you can kind of play around with it. There's a lot of different options, but what the Hilbert curve does is kind of make this little pattern looking thing on the top. And I personally feel like this looks a little bit better. It looks a little less 3D printed, but you can also do some other stuff with it. Uh, that's just my personal preference. But uh, another one that looks kind of cool is concentric. Let's see what that looks like. So you can see how that kind of goes in circles around the name. So that might work out, especially if you had like a circular version of this, probably look pretty interesting. And then let's see. Uh, you can do rectilinear as well, which I think will be pretty similar to monotonic. Yeah, so it's basically the same thing as monotonic. So what I generally recommend, you can do rectilinear if you want to, but I personally feel like the Hilbert curve looks a little more premium, a little less 3D printed. It does have some minor imperfections, but generally speaking, I think it's kind of cool little weave looking pattern. So that's what I recommend, and uh, I'll show you all how that turns out here in a second. All right, so we're doing the first layer here. And in a second, you should be able to see the outline of the 3DS. So I'm printing this face down because I feel like generally that looks better, especially when you have this textured plate. Now I can see that it's starting on the uh, letters there. And that's what's so nice about this is you can do custom designs and it's something that people would actually hopefully get some use out of. So show you all at the filament change, how that works. All right, so now time to switch the filament out. Pretty simple little procedure here. Yes. And you always want to make sure that it comes out. You can see that it has changed over to the white. Now it's going to start doing the white. It should be able to spam add pretty easily, and then we'll change it back to blue once the middle section's done. It's not perfect, but it'll fill in over time. All right. All right, so here are the finished name tags or luggage tags. You can see that I used the texture here, which made everything look good. It did have a little bit of trouble bridging in the D, especially because it tried to go across this way. But I think generally speaking, this looks pretty good. And then on the back side, you can see here, I forgot to change this top layer to the Hilbert curve. And this is the actual monotonic where it just goes straight across on the top layer. So, I think that this could be better, but in general, again, you're not really gonna be that close to people with luggage tags, or uh, other people aren't gonna be that close to you, so you won't really notice this as well uh, as you think you might. So it's pretty far away, you can't really tell. So uh, I think this turned out overall pretty good. Another thing to mention is most people don't have this many letters in their first and last names, so you could usually make this bigger and that makes it look a little bit better as well. So this version, it's the same thing on the other side, but I just changed the top layers of the Hilbert curve. And this is what I got. And it's not quite as smooth as the other one, but I think this looks less 3D printed. Uh, if you look at it from further away, especially, it just looks like it has a little texture to it. So I personally would probably print it this way and 
Some of this might be that I didn't have the printer finely tuned and would have had some overextrusion in some areas, but uh, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out, especially. So this is a pretty good overall concept to try to print for a profit, uh, whether it's on the Etsy store, or Facebook, whatever, uh, you might sell this on, but feel free to take the file and do with it as you wish, even if it's just printing for your friends and family. I think this is a pretty good use case for 3D printing because uh, people you know, obviously need customization, different colors, you could do different shapes, you could do a circular one, you could do an oval one, uh, you can make little designs around the edge. So. Uh, overall, I feel like this is a pretty solid idea and pretty easy to do overall. So thanks again for watching and hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one.